Hey, good morning, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Happy Friday to every single one of you. Sorry about the video not being uploaded yesterday. I had to put all kind of things together for my desk. <laughs> I have six monitors, three computers set up for our live streams that will be coming soon. Just like we used to have a whole bunch of information just so we can be prepared for everything. And it's taken all day to get everything set up with the mic, everything that's going on with it. So I have all kinds of new things coming out, just like we used to have on this channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Mark. I upload all year long. I used to live stream for years, almost every day. Every severe weather event, whether it's big or small, is big to you. So I do live stream, whether they're big or small. And it is coming soon, so make sure you subscribe. Now let's go through some of the information that we do know as facts of what's coming with this storm, as well as this potential feet of snow. Because the GFS is taking this storm a lot quicker than Euro, about 24 hours faster, and that's the big difference on the snowfall. But the severe weather is going to grow. As you go Monday into Tuesday, you still have that 15% risk, and when you go Tuesday into Wednesday, it will grow. Then when you go Wednesday into Thursday, it's going to be its biggest threat. Now, this is when the winds are going to pick up. You have a lot of shear and a lot of chances for tornadoes. Now, this is going to change as we get closer. So remember, all the links are in the description to help save you time. Go click on the link and you can see what cities and states are impacted so far. This isn't kicking off until Monday, guys. But show support. Make sure to share the video. Let people know what impacts are coming. I'm still showing some very high damage and winds. Hurricane force is coming with this wind gust. When you look at your 500 millibar vortice, you can see as you go into Tuesday, you start getting some severe weather in the south as this big low pressure surfaces all the way to Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, when it comes Wednesday, it's going to shove a lot of severe weather, a lot of shear, a lot of winds as this bulks up. But it is going to bring a lot of winds, and it is going to bring a lot of snowfall as well. Now, it is pushing a little further north like we've been seeing in the ensembles. But with the update, it shows that the GFS is going to come up a little bit with the snow, and the euro is going to come down a little bit. Even the Canadian is showing crazy snowfall rates up to three feet. And our tornado threat is going to get worse and worse, guys. This is our biggest month so far for April. Our average is 189 tornadoes. But as we go into May, it's going to get even bigger. Our biggest month is going to be in May for severe weather for tornadoes before it starts downgrading a little bit more. Now, this is by Live Storms Media. Y'all know how I always support these guys. It's a very good group of guys. They bring this content just to help you know what's going on. And they show the Georgia tornado as it was coming down and just ripping apart. It barely missed them. They had to slow down and stop. It's a very good group of guys. I've been supporting them for over a year on my channel. Please go follow them. Matter of fact, if you go to our channel, you see a bunch of videos. And this is where we're really going to start seeing a lot more tornadoes, a lot more severe weather for going into the rest of this month and for next month. And the update on the cold front, guys, as it comes in on the 10th and 11th, it is going to stay around for quite some time all the way to the 20th and 21st. We have multiple systems coming. The one we're dealing with now, even though it is a strong storm, it is the weakest of what's coming. And you can see this with the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, as you get a big trough coming in for the 10th and 11th. Then after that, you get a couple of multiple dips. And this is multiple low pressure systems that will keep coming into our country and keep forming and giving us severe weather. And as you look at a potential velocity anomaly, it lets us know how strong these systems are coming. You can see the systems that are coming from the west into the southeast and the upper Midwest. It has weakened down. But what is coming after that in the teens all the way to the 20s of April is multiple systems. Not only one on the West Coast, Central U.S., all the way to the 20s. We're going to have multiple systems coming in, giving us problems, guys. And every single one of these is a lot stronger than what we're about to get now. Now, when you look at your dew points, you can see as this cold air comes in for Monday, it is going to be severe weather in the south, but it is going to grow. As you go into Tuesday, it's going to go higher up. Then as you go into Wednesday, that's when this surface low really swings on in, and it puts a nasty front all the way from Texas all the way up to Nebraska. And there's a lot of lightning, a lot of severe weather that's going to be with this. And it does carry all the way into Wednesday to the upper Midwest, all the way to lower Minnesota, Wisconsin, as it goes through the Ohio Valley for Thursday and still goes out through the Mid-Atlantic, the Southeast, and the Northeast for Friday. So it is going to be a long-lived storm 
as well as these cold temperatures are coming in. If you've been following my channel, you've been knowing about this for quite some time and hopefully you are prepared for it. But this brings 60 dew points all day Monday, grows even bigger for Tuesday. But as you go into Wednesday, it's going to be its strongest. That's when the high 60s get raised way up. You have lightning in all this area. You're getting a lot of snow on a wraparound on the west side of this storm. But it's bringing damage and winds with it as well. And the cape, the lift that you need, the instability to create severe thunderstorms is there, especially for tornadoes. As you go through Sunday, it lifts all the way up to Missouri, Illinois. As you go through Monday, it's all through the Ohio Valley. As you go through Tuesday, it starts growing in strength. This is where your shear is going to get involved, especially for Texas, Oklahoma. Then it goes all the way up towards Iowa with very strong instability. Very strong chances to get tornadoes with the severe weather, guys. Then as you go through Wednesday, it grows all the way from Texas all the way up through Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, and Iowa. With some very strong capes, some very strong instability that is going to create a lot of severe weather. And we have a lot of chances for tornadoes. Right here on Wednesday, 1 p.m. is one of your strongest points when that cold front coming in. You can see the slash right here. And now you're getting strong jewels Enough instability to create a lot of severe weather. And this is all because of your dew points. Your dew points are raised way up for Wednesday as you get that cold front coming in and creating all this severe weather. Your biggest day is going to be Wednesday. And you can see with the lightning strikes as you go through Monday, you get some severe weather, but it keeps getting worse and worse. Now, Tuesday morning, you get a lot of chances for hail and all these white lightning strikes. There's a lot of lightning strikes in these storms. Tuesday afternoon, it grows into Kansas. And look at this, big period of lightning strikes, big chances for a lot of severe weather as you go overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. And this raises all the way up to Iowa, Illinois with a lot of lightning strikes as well. This is going to be a very severe, very intense severe weather season, guys, because it's getting worse and worse. Everything's getting warmer and warmer. But as you go to Wednesday, then it raises way up with the dew points, and it goes all the way up towards South Dakota, all the way down to Louisiana. With very much severe weather, a lot of lightning strikes, and all this white lightning strikes is a lot of chances for very large hail to come out of this storm. Wednesday afternoon, it moves to South Dakota. By the time you go to Wednesday evening, it moves over towards Iowa, Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, real strong in the south, and it keeps moving over as it goes, guys. This is going to be a long-lived long severe weather event and as you look at your 500 millibar for your winds you can see as you come into wednesday that it really starts to ramp up for wednesday with a lot of severe weather a lot of winds and it's going to bring some damage in winds i'm showing even hurricane force is possible but look how it goes from texas to oklahoma goes to kansas with a lot of strong winds goes to missouri by thursday morning overnight definitely going to be nocturnal tornadoes guys all the way up to Iowa with very strong winds as it goes into Illinois and the Ohio Valley. It starts weakening down for Thursday evening. So Wednesday into overnight, Thursday morning is going to be the strongest severe weather out of all this on this big storm. You see a little closer here as you go Monday and Tuesday. You're getting a lot of winds. You're getting a lot of shear coming out of this. But as you go into Wednesday, then it really kicks in for New Mexico, Texas, Goes into Oklahoma, grows into Kansas, gets real strong for Wednesday night into the overnight hours for Thursday. That's when you get a lot of winds. That's when you get 131 knots, guys. That is like 160 miles per hour wind that is up there at the 500 millibars. And it is traveling all the way down to our level, bringing a lot of damage and winds with this system. And you can see the damage in winds as you go Tuesday into Wednesday. Then it starts growing. You have 50, 60, even 70 miles per hour wind gusts expected for Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas by Wednesday night. And then it grows overnight into the early morning hours with way more winds going for the Dakotas, Iowa, Missouri. Then it goes to the Ohio Valley with 50 miles per hour wind gust. So you have a big pocket right here where it's 60, 70, even up to 85 miles per hour wind gusts, especially the higher elevations. This is going to bring not only a lot of snowfall, a lot of damage and winds, and it's going to bring a lot of rainfall as well. 
Now, the Euro is still showing anywhere from Colorado, Wyoming, all the way up to the Dakotas. It's still going to get anywhere from one to two plus feet of snow. And check a second source. The Canadian got even worse than the Euro. The Canadian shows that you have a chance for three, maybe four feet of snow, which is very heavy and very ridiculous, but it depends on timing. We have the Arctic air coming in, and if it comes in overnight to early morning hours, it's definitely going to be a big snowfall. If it comes throughout the daytime, we have the daytime heating. It's not going to be as much snow. Now, the GFS takes this 24 hours quicker than the Euro, and it takes it a lot less snowfall because of your daytime heating, and a lot of this is becoming rain. But what I'm showing in the ensemble is that the GFS is showing that it's slowing down a little bit, and it's not going to be as quick as the GFS is showing, and it's coming a little more to the Euro snowfall. Not as heavy, like three feet, but it is coming to a little bit of the middle of Euro and GFS. Now, when you look between both models, the Euro shows that it already picks up very heavy by Wednesday and Thursday. A lot of severe weather, a lot of rainfall, a lot of snow. GFS says it already passed by. GFS takes it as a very quick high ridge and turns it in and everybody is gonna be getting rainfall out of that. Euro says it's gonna take 24 hours longer and then it's gonna build up. And that's why you have more snowfall with the Euro than the GFS. Now, when you look at all the ensembles to see what your average is, you can see a lot of it showing very much feet of snow. That's what that blue is. But your controlled member right here in the front, this is your zero Z. I'm gonna update you on the six Z. You see how it takes a lot less snowfall than what all these weather models are showing. It's showing very much feet of snow for North Dakota and possibly for Montana. Now, I usually go with the twelve Z and the zero Z because they always put these blooms up twice a day, and that's. At the 12Z and the 0Z, those are the most effective information. But when the 6Z came out, it shows in the controlled member that there is a chance it is coming back towards the Euros, taking of how much snowfall you're going to get. And all that pink is all 11 to 18 inches of snowfall. And that blue is going anywhere from 2 to 3 feet. So, so far, it's showing possibly for Western Dakotas and Montana. Montana really going to get hit with 2 to 3 feet of snowfall, guys. And we really won't know more until this creates a surface low. Until it gets a surface low, then we'll know more about the impacts. Until then, it's going to be all over the place. So I will keep you updated. I don't want to speculate about what's going to happen. We need this surface low to form before we know the track according to the impacts, guys. So God bless you all. I hope you have a very blessed Friday today. I just want to give you a quick update on what's going on with this system. As we get closer to it, we will know more more definite information. Right now, there's a bunch of wild numbers out there, and really none of it is really believable because it's just crazy to have feet of snow coming in the middle of April. So I'll update you early Sunday morning. That way we know more information about what is coming for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Even better numbers on the wind gusts because those wind gusts look very scary. It could be hurricane force for a lot of people, and that could be very much damaging. And with the snowfall that we're getting in those areas with those winds, it could be a lot of blizzard conditions as well, guys. So I will update you come Sunday morning when we have better information. Right now, it's still up in the air. It's still unknown. You need a surface low. Nobody can tell you what these impacts are going to be until a surface low forms. At the same time, I hope every single one of you have a great Friday, a very blessed weekend this weekend. Y'all are all very beautiful people and the best community that I've ever seen, especially on YouTube. And not only with the severe weather, but with everything that we're dealing with going on in our world today. Let's stay focused and keep our eyes and our heart on God. Amen. Galatians 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, 
which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the re Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by the face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. For they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. Amen. Have a very blessed day today, guys. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I still have a lot of work to do to get these live streams up because I like to get it very top-notch just like we used to be. All the information. I don't show all my stuff off. That's too much of a boaster and that is far from God's heart. It is written. But I will have all the information available and show you as we go through these live streams. I think you'll like what we've become. <laughs> have a very blessed weekend. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Happy Friday to every single one of you. I'll update you Sunday morning with impacts and what to expect on this storm. By then, we will know more. All power. <laughs> All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. <laughs> and he is there for us forever and ever. Pray to him. He loves to answer prayers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day. I'll see you early. Sunday morning.